Welcome to Sizzling Vessel Seeker. This video yeah, is not much about anything. We're just fixing a whole bunch of little stuff on the boat and I want you to know that we're not, not just slacking, all right? Well, okay, we're slacking a little bit. Wait, that's not all. Monty shows up in this video and he tells about riding out Hurricane Idalia on the Steenhashie River. Yeah, he was in it. It was yeah. fun. That's your boat that hit the bridge there. Yeah. Okay, I'm, so, I'm surprised it's afloat after that. Little stuff this week. This is Randall. Randall is grinding Hi. off the little burrs. I guess. Oh, a little smoother right there. And I'm redoing the rope on the foresail here. I think I made this patch a little too long. And so I've got not enough rope, too much sail. So I'm gonna split it away here and see if we can make up some of that difference. This is kind of a typical week on a boat. It's like you got lots of little things that can be fixed and worked on. What that grinder do? Good job. So we have improvised some scaffolding out of one of our extension ladders, taken apart and a couple of deck tiles. And that'll make working up there a lot easier. Oh yeah. So that's the old stitching there. So the problem is between there and here. It's got way too much sail and not enough rope. Fishes are excited about something down there, but I don't see the sharks yet. This is not gonna be easy to do while the sail's up. I gotta figure it out. Now back on the tender, we got these snap shackles and that is a snap shackle. You just snap it closed and then you pull that to release it. But the problem is we put the rope on so we can grab hold and pull easy but they have a little piece of junk wire in here, this wire ring. And when that comes out, there's a spring that pushes this. It just, just goes shoots out and into the water. So we've lost one already. So we're gonna put better uh, snap rings in there. Got a much heavier duty snap ring off of Amazon and that, if it will fit through there, will solve our problem. Yeah, that, that's damn handy. <laughs> Might want one of those someday. Even having that line up. Got it. Like rush hour here. We got two of them passing right behind us. Now our next project is sail shades for the deck. So we're gonna pull our HTP welder out here. And Randall's gonna learn how to TIG weld a little bit. I have really enjoyed this machine. I highly recommend the Invert TIG from HTP. It's an AC DC TIG and it has been fantastic. So we're gonna use that and some 3 8 inch stainless rod to make some little cleats. And then we'll use quarter inch amp steel line on that. That's not bad. Yeah. A lot of finesse. Let it cool down. Take it out. Roll it around. Do some more. Well, it's coming up pretty good. I got those two little gaps right there to fill in tomorrow morning. And there's a bunch of other spots I need to get to, but it'll wait. It's coming along nicely. Okay, I got the front end sewed up. Time to go to the air show. Well, we're back from the show and back for lunch, and that's kind of cool to see, isn't it? Monty's back with us. Monty was in the hurricane. It was yeah. fun. That's your boat that hit the bridge there. Yeah. That's, that's your hunter? Yeah. So the moorings broke on the other thing and everything you went. Oh. Okay, I'm, so, I'm surprised it's afloat after that. We already lost one boat. It's already down there floating. I don't know whose boat that is. Ours is okay here. Monty's doing excellent. And there's that surge. Oh, and here comes 
jumping down the lane. Yeah. What's over here? Yep, there it goes. was after the wind mm -hmm. how strange the hurricane started like the the real strong wind started about 5 30 is when it came in and you'll love this dude so i knew i needed to power into the wind and the surge so i got up and i had two storm anchors or i had two what do you call it uh emergency anchors set up on the Irwin, and i had two emergency anchors set up on the catalina so the point that i couldn't hold the Irwin no more I was gonna cut the Catalina loose and throw out my two emergency anchors. I sit on top of the Irwin with my scuba goggles on, a life jacket, my cell phone in my pocket, my radio <laughs> clipped to the other hand, and my fins right here. Yeah. And I made it through it. But. Uh, in case you had to swim for it. Yeah. Once, once I got into the neighborhood and was crashing through the trees, I was gonna bail. <laughs> What do you, how do you say that? Steenhatchee. Steenhatchee River, and that's the bridge right there, I guess. And you do it again? Oh, yeah. It's a heartbeat. <laughs> it's a heartbeat. Too much fun, huh? Uh, I live for that kind of stuff. No, not, not me. Not yet. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how many people keep their spare tires in their backyards. I bet I've seen a thousand spare tires float down the river. <laughs> Maybe there was a dump somewhere there. It doesn't look bad. I mean, the water's flat. No, it already went back down then. We were back to just regular flood stage then. I see. But see, like that dock right there, it was like way over here and it come up flowing. Oh, I see. I see. Everything's not land. where it would be. Yeah, I know. This was well after. This was like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, and we're sewing the uh, cover for the cushion back behind me. I think it's a Velcro on it because the snaps weren't working. When I seen an alligator the next day, like after I seen the carcass, yeah, this floated up. Yeah. I mean, would you get in the water with that? I'd wait for it to go downstream. No. No. But before I committed my boat to a mooring, yeah, I would dive the mooring. But I'm never getting on. Or I would. After what I've read and what I've seen, firsthand witness, you know. Yeah. Mm -mm. Why? Because you don't know what it is. It's well, crap. that's why you dive them. What the hell with that? Just put your anchor out that you know is good. Well, and then have true. a storm system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You own a storm anchor. Yeah, you had three anchors. You said. Yeah. I took a 150 foot of chain. It's it was really a 50 foot piece of chain and a 100 foot chain and i took the 50 footer and set it out on anchor first and then i took that 50 footer and folded it in half and tied at the connection point with two shackles what kind of chain three eighths inch chain yeah what do, you, what do you got on that thing? what is the size of that probably three eighths it was the same size as what's on that and then it's a smaller okay thing. now you're talking about the you, we're, we're talking about the catalina though the catalina stayed tied to the earl the whole behind it no i'd like i had i took which i had more uh bumpers what are they called uh, fenders. fenders i had enough fenders and stuff in between it and i lasted real good to the side really yeah and it weathered the storm real good huh. didn't beat neither one of them up but, uh, which one was healing over in the water the other boats that was out there man oh i see you know what i'm saying but uh I wish I could have videotaped it. Cause it I wish you videotaped it too. I'm not the photographer that you are. I, I'm not gonna put my camera out in it. Uh, <laughs> I want you to put your camera out in it. I wouldn't even take my phone out. This is a Ziploc bag in my pocket. And the only reason I had it in my pocket is I thought I was gonna have to bail off. So it, when did it come ashore? What time of day? 5.30 in the morning. Okay, so it was making light. Yeah, so right at daylight the storm comes in. So I'm gonna say I don't know. It, it was all so crazy and hectic, man. At 5.30, Dave Jensen called, and he said, my rear mooring broke loose. What do I do? And I said, you're a grown man. It's your boat. Figure it out. I'm not I'm not coming over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, bye. He hangs up the phone, and I guess he fired it up, and I, and I, and he, and he, I told him, I said, if I were you, I would start motoring into the wind and trying to help whatever else is still tied to the bottom. Right. Because you know, you're a giant sail in the wind. Yeah. 
And he said, well, what if that mooring, that rope, that chain's in my prop? I said, well, you're going to have to make the decision, brother. I can't. It's your buck. <laughs> you know? He's like, okay. He hung up the phone. And this dude weathered the storm pretty good. The boat changed directions twice, and I don't know what actually went down and what happened, but he had the ass end of the boat tied to the shore. He did run a shoreline and tied to a tree. So, so the storm surge come in, and I swear to God, I seen this 65 foot boat playing out on the storm surge, and the wave of shit and trash that come underneath it. It no longer needs a bottom clean. <laughs> and I would do all that shit again. The aftermath of the people fucking hating on each other and people looting and just really? the hatred, you know, that came after it was unreal. That's too bad. That's a good opportunity to do the right thing. And I was trying, you know, out. I was going around helping people clean up, you know, I necessarily clean up trash, but I was working on the water, trying to get all the boats back, you know. And, and then when we went ashore to try to get a free meal and, and, the, and the land people treated us like we were fucking crackheads, I was like, fuck all of y'all. I'm out of here. I'll go spend my money somewhere else. 100 amp hours runs my life. See, look at that. On my boat. It's not through, it's not it's through the needle it's anymore. It's because your, your, your hook's not catching. It's because, yeah, it's coming on thread. You need the thread from this side going back that way. Ah, it's, 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 it? Yeah. It's because I'm out of it backwards all of a sudden. Did I do that? Yeah, it goes from this side. Fuck me, that's my problem. It, it, yeah. All right. Well, but the latch, the, the di indent on the needles on this side. Right. Right. Because the hook comes off this side. So when when it pushes the needle through, it makes the loop, and that that indent is so that the hook can come through there and hook it. See what I'm saying? So I I all of a sudden just started threading it right to left instead of left to right. Yeah. Stick it through there, like I said. And work. I'm getting old. Shit I'm getting old happens, quick. Man. Shit happens, man. I know this shit because my what? mama had an upholstery shop. This does sound right. Your mother had an upholstery shop. Uh huh. No wonder you. And these box cushion covers you're making, I can make in my fucking sleep. Is that coming this way? Yeah. Yeah, we get a little afternoon uh, thunder shower. Look at here. There you go, Skip. See it coming around at the other side of you? But now the bow's coming around, so hang on to it right there. That's just the thunderstorm blew past it, so the wind shifted. It's like putting a prom dress on. Getting there. Ah. Ah. Was it now? easier than when y'all did it? Velcro. I, I don't remember doing it. I seriously think I had other crews doing it, so. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, that job is done. I finally got Velcro sewed to the back of it, so it'll stick in there. If that works, there's more to do. And these new little cleats, they're for the next video, where we build three shades for the deck to keep the sun out. And I keep thinking about Monty sitting out in that hurricane. That was something else to do. I tell you what, you know what? The media kills so much of that. And let me explain this. If you watch the media talk about a hurricane, it's always, it's going to be a cat five, a tremendous storm. Time to be ready. We're going to be dealing with a hurricane for South Georgia in towards the Carolinas. So this morning, this afternoon, your time is running out. You know, it's always hyped up so much. And whether you like it or not, that trickles in. And so you pick up their same is ignorant fears is what they are yeah a hurricane is nothing to mess with hell there was one just coming close to me and i moved uh, you know 70 miles that direction it was a good time to test the boat but it's a wise thing to do i am not going to sit in a hurricane not on a boat that i live on now monty yeah he's a different he's wired <laughs> he's wired differently so he will you know he doesn't have his whole life wrapped up in his boat so uh, or one of his boats so you know he takes the chances that are appropriate for him and fantastic that he does it. Wouldn't it be fantastic if the rest of us lived with that lack of fear of what the media imposes on you? Now, there's good sources for information about hurricanes, you know, National Weather Service. I got a little app called uh, Hurricane Watcher or something like that. Gives you great information about it, but you don't want to get it from the media because they 
They are such chicken littles. They are have their hands up, flying in the air, acting like idiots all the time, and that will wear off on you. So my advice is uh, try living your life without the social media that uh, acts like that, and just get the facts. Anyway, hope you had a wonderful week. Hope you built something. Send us a picture. We'll put it on the end of our video because we find it inspirational. Thanks, guys.